So one of the reasons I haven't really been doing any How Furry reviews lately is because of the debacle with YouTube's copyright systems that you might have seen in the last How Furry video. You know, with the, the angry birds. Basically, I had to go through a whole ordeal just to make sure it was just viewable on the website. It would, it just... If you need me to explain how the YouTube copyright appeal system works, then I'm not the guy to go to. Go to someone else's channel. I mean, it's not the only factor that's preventing me from doing these kinds of videos. Other cases being there's other stuff that I want to talk about, like my time here in China, the roleplay video. That was a lot of fun to make, and I kind of want to make more of those. So I have to plan those out along with these kinds of videos, along with other various vlog videos, and keep it to around two or three videos per month. It's not the only factor, and there are ways to work around it, definitely, but finding material to use that won't get your video claimed or taken down can prove to be difficult to say the least. My best bet is something that's already been reviewed by another YouTube content creator, because I know if it doesn't affect them, maybe it won't affect me. And there are also just a bunch of full-length movies of obscure stuff, or semi-obscure at least, that have just been uploaded in its entirety up on YouTube, like in the good old days. And there's a surprising amount of those, believe it or not. This brings us to today's movie, The Adventures of the American Rabbit. Special thanks to this user for leaving their comment here for a recommendation of this amazing movie. And just like you, I have never heard of this movie ever before. The title was so generic that I had to know what it was actually about. I get to show this shining gem of so bad it's good animation to you. Yes, you're very lucky. I haven't seen anyone else really touch this except the person that uploaded this in its entirety in HD quality. So now I bring you the spectacular film, The Adventures of the American Rabbit on How Furry Is It? The Adventures of the American Rabbit is the story of Robert Rabbit, a young bunny boy who grows up in a small homogenous rabbit village. Through something called the Legacy, he saves his parents from a falling boulder and gains sudden America powers. These powers activate when he goes really fast, he just runs, and these powers don't really have anything to do with being American. Funny how that works. It's like, you know, Robert Rabbit is just a rabbit that's American. But with the guidance of this older, wise guide rabbit, he then sets off on a quest to do good, as nebulous as that sounds, leaving his village behind to live up to his family name and face full life consequences or some crap like that, I don't know. Where do I start with this? Maybe the first thing I should mention is this is a a co-production with Toei. Yeah, this is like the second or third thing that Toei has helped make that has been featured on this channel. But I will say they at least did a decent job with the animation. I won't say it's up to the quality of their famed Dragon Ball or DBZ series, but it's still pretty okay. It's definitely a good mid to low budget 80s or 90s anime vibe. Nothing to write home about, but the, probably the strongest point of this film which isn't saying much. The music in this film stuck out to me in a few ways. One of them being the American Rabbit theme, if you will, sounding very close to John Williams' Superman theme. And I'm baffled by just how they got away with that. Especially since the the this is the, the 1980s, the Superman films were still a thing at the time. So how do you do that? Other than that, you have the rock music that's aged like the cheese that it is, some standard orchestral beats and music beds under more dramatic scenes, and sadly no villain song or heroic aria. Like the best we got is the main character's mom singing Bach's Minuet in G. La, 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 la. I know this because I had to play this on piano in some of the beginner piano classes that I took. It 
inadvertently, it's very hard to play with pause. Oh well. I could talk more about that scene in particular and how it's basically unneeded as is most of the first act, but I don't want to dip too far into that territory outside of the spoiler section, so I'll just say this right now. This movie was probably written by a literal child. I mean that in both a gleeful, wholesome way and in a really critical way. Because I know this was written by an adult, with screenwriting and real life experience far above that of a literal child. But I like to think that this is one of those Axe Cop kind of shows. See, Axe Cop is a special comic and TV show where the main artist is five year old. Five year old comes up with all the story elements and characters and the main artist just throws that together and comes up with something so wacky and entertaining the hopeful side of me thinks that they just gave this to a child to write instead of a, 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 a professional screenwriter adult there is nothing that will support the idea that this was written by an actual child but that's the only thing i can come up with reasonably to explain the outright inadequacy of this screenwriting job. Plot threads and even the ending itself remain unresolved by the end of the film. Most of the characters in the film act as wallpaper, and I don't mean side characters like most of the characters in general don't do jack in the grand scheme of things. They even got a great talent pool of voice actors for this project too, but most of them sound bored or are just phoning it in outside of decently performed jokes here and there. Our main antagonists are a biker gang mafia run by a mysterious big bad, and anything they do is never met with any police involvement. This takes place in America, the, the police country. And we see San Francisco, New Orleans, New York City. They have police there. Why are they not here? There's a lot to talk about in terms of script and plot, mostly how bad it is, so now is the time for spoilers. Go ahead and skip to this time to avoid being spoiled, but I want you to take into consideration these spoils aren't to save you from watching the movie, they are an appetizer to set yourself to watching this dang movie, because I was completely amazed by how bad this was. There will also be a timestamp in the pinned comment below the description, it's for all you mobile users, so watch out for that. Now, if you watch the first act, you might think that our main rabbit would turn into an unstoppable Gary Stew by how much it puts him on a pedal stool, especially with all the wooden forced scenes that tell and don't show how good he is. I mean, he's good at soccer and piano, and that's about it. But the parents and the wise old rabbit talk up and down about how amazing Robert Rabbit is. But like, he's not very good as a superhero, is he? He's selectively stupid and naive, but then somehow clever enough to take down an equally smart and inadequate mafia? And that sounds like an oxymoron. Because it is. This whole film is an oxymoron. In fact, I would say everyone in this inside this film, all the characters are just flat out stupid. Outside of being introduced to the bike gang that just sees him as a target for some reason, is a nightclub over in San Francisco. Yes, San Francisco. The big, big, big city over on the West Coast. And he randomly goes inside because they have a help wanted for a piano player. And he calls it a, a job. Not a gig, not an audition. He wants the piano job. Hey kid, so what do you want? Oh, well, uh, the job. Yeah, I wanted to see if I could apply for the job. No musician talks like that. At all. That just weirded me out. See a nightclub get demolished by the biker gang mafia with no security at all or police involvement again. So the best they can do is try to raise funds through a countrywide tour after creating a rally and call to action within the city of San Fran. I guess that's what you do when you have non-existent police. I know most musicians make the majority of their money touring, but they have like three gigs. They go to the Grand Canyon, they go to NOLA, and then NYC via car. Those are their only gigs. It's hard to believe, but some people just don't understand how big the United States really is. I believe you could compare it to the size of China and it's almost the same size. I would call this a Japanese man's only impression of America if he only knew about America through television and movies back in the 80s. And it really shows too, except the part where there's no police at all. 
Isn't that a thing in American movies and TV shows, even in the 80s? What the hell? And again, they never resolve whether they raise enough money to rebuild a nightclub. It just ends on our hero defeating the big bad in the winter and getting his victory kiss from the only female character in the film of note. It's not even like cut for time, because it's only 80 minutes long. Also, the big bad villain's motivation is just, I do bad things only because I'm evil and do bad things. Therefore, QED. Without any self-awareness of that simplistic circular logic, it sounded like he was joking or covering something up at first or just making something up on the fly, but no. That's his actual motivation. And the craziest part, the suited man here is not the actual big bad. It's the vulture puppeteering that body somehow. Why? Why would you do that? That says nothing. That adds nothing to his character. It's so bad shit. Need I remind you that our hero is also, again, stupid, but in a clever way. So in the beginning, he fixes a leaking dam, but then in order to stop a doomsday device that we never actually see being controlled by the big bad, our hero, American Rabbit, shuts down a hydroelectric power plant near Niagara Falls that powers NYC. It's the craziest kind of parallelism you would expect in good filmmaking, but used in such a poor way. Like, it's executed in such a clever way, but the overall addition to it to the plot is just so stupid. I love it. It's amazing. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on this again. If you want to see more stupid stuff that happened to it, just watch the movie. So, spoilers over. It's time we shift gears and look at how furry this American Rabbit film be. I will be using three metrics for this video. Uh, we'll look at cast, furriness, and relevancy. First, we'll look at cast, or how many anthropomorphic characters there are in the film that are relevant to the plot. We have another cartoon movie on our hands that features all animal characters and no actual humans, so let's meet them all. First is Robert Rabbit, Rob for short, played by the legendary Barry Gordon, voice of Donatello and Bebop from the original 1980s TMNT cartoon. He's pretty cookie cutter in terms of your standard hero protagonist dude, you know, other than being a selective idiot. The other notable characters that join him are Ping Pong, voiced by Garfield. A bunch of those jackals have formed a kind of procession, and they're riding in our parade. Smart kids watch this show. Other kids change the channel. Yes, that Garfield. And yes, his name is a nod to King Kong. I did not expect the voice of Garfield to come for this character. And also, he is my favorite character of the entire film. Well, he would be if he wasn't so boring. He's just such a lovable guy. Next is the nightclub owner, Teddy, a panda bear with no cultural bearings tying him to being Asian. I'm not saying pandas have to be Asian, namely mainland Chinese, but the opportunity was there at least. Like this was the 80s. You can't make an Asian joke with a panda? Would the Japanese even care? And finally, our lone female character, Bunny O'Hara. Not to be confused with Bucky O'Hara. See, this rabbit here is mainly pink. This character right here is mainly green. There is a difference. Bunny O'Hara is introduced as a rabbit with boobs and an hourglass figure. But she is different from the mom character, who never shows up again along with Rob's dad after he leaves the village. See, O'Hara is definitely sexualized, unlike the mom, and doesn't really do much of note other than be a love interest for Robbie, and the American Rabbit for that matter. Why don't you come over here by the fire and rest for a few moments and get warm? Uh, warm, huh? Uh, no, no, I, I've got to save the White Brothers. They're one heck of a band. And uh, by the way, ma'am, uh, there is no fire. I would make a joke here about rabbits being extra horny, but I don't want to really split any hairs. <laughs> anyway, other than that, you have the jackals and the bike gang mafia, a lot of animal character wallpaper, and you have the vulture with the bad guy too. If you're looking for great characterization, don't watch this film. But if you're looking for a movie with all anthro characters, then this is your film, as long as that's your only metric. I mean, that would explain some of uh, favorite films that I know from other furries. Like, I know furries that are films of the entirety of Alpha and Omega. The entire franchise. I have yet to tackle more than the first film, and th the rest of them just... Nah. 
I don't know if I want to delve that deep. This gets a rating of high for cast. Next is furriness, or how visually furry these characters look. If I could make one criticism of this character design, it's that the ears of these damn rabbits look like they were screwed on wrong. It's like a weird version of that long, floppy-eared variety that exists in parts of America, and I don't know if I like it or not. All the rabbits have these kind of ears too, so what am I supposed to do here? What am I supposed to think? It's not like I can complain about getting away with copy-pasting character designs, because they don't look that similar. Other than that, you can easily identify what species one character is, and there is a good variety of species to choose from as well. Remember, higher biodiversity is good for the environment. I would argue that you won't find very much of a few of these species in America, considering they aren't native to the land, but then again, Africans and white people aren't native to America either. We're all one big biodiverse melting pot, and I love it that way. Like, don't listen to anyone that says the USA belongs to like one specific race, one specific ethnicity, or one specific like religion. No, don't listen to them. We're all in this together. Everyone's welcome. Except for Fortnite players, you can go away. But yeah, back to furry animals. They're almost like a perfect level of anthropomorphic and cartoonish. Nothing too realistic, no wacky body proportions for the most part, though that panda is a bit on the short and skinny side compared to the real life version. And if these characters had more than one note personalities, then I'd find some way to tie that to their chosen species. Overall, I'm actually praising this as a high in furriness. Finally, we have relevancy, or how relevant their animal species is to the main plot. I've already explained that the main plot makes zero sense, so let's go ahead and start off from there. I guess there's nothing really tying these animals given species to the actual plot outside of here are the bad animals and here are the good animals. So good animals battle against the bad animals, then boom, it's a movie. Kind of the case with most kids' cartoons or movies filled with animal characters, unfortunately. I mean, there are some exceptions, but because of the popular cartoons from Hanna-Barbera and the toyetic cartoons from the 80s and 90s, there's just this mindset that any animal characters in a cartoon setting automatically for kids. That's why you see so many mascots for kids things be animals as well. I guess when you become an adult, you gotta drop the imaginative animal shows and watch all human dramas and comedies and dramedies, mostly filled with white middle-class socialites who watches this bland, boring bullshit anyway. I'm sorry, I, I got a little off topic there. Yeah, nothing about being a rabbit or jackal or vulture really ties into the plot other than maybe a predator versus prey dynamic. So I'm going with a medium low in relevancy. So now let's break it down. We have a high in cast, a high in furriness, and a medium low in relevancy. I wasn't sure how exactly to calculate that, so I'm just gonna give this maybe a somewhere between like medium to medium high, maybe like slightly medium high like somewhere in there. Overall, the quality of this film isn't so much about a furry aesthetic. I mean, the original characters of American Rabbit, the White Brothers, the corporate penguins, etc. They were all mainly used as advertising mascots for a bunch of Japanese brands at the time, so that's the only reason this movie came to light. Even then, that's no excuse for it to suck this much. At least to me, I can take a step back and laugh at it for the mess that it is. It's old cheesy trash, and I love it. So this has been Gregor living the American dream reindeer with How Furry Is It? I have a Patreon down below if you want to support this channel and other videos that show up on here. I don't just have these review videos, I also have a vlog where I am showing my adventures here in China as well as some other random odd videos. I have Twitter, I have uh, Telegram, I have an Instagram, but I don't really use it that much. It just doesn't work that well on my phone or on this Chinese uh, internet. Also, I did a collaboration with this unknown YouTuber. I'm not sure if you heard of her. Her name is uh, Hokari Ru. She only has like 120,000 or so subscribers. I mean, who is she? I don't know. But I helped her out with a furry online etiquette guide video, so go ahead and check that out as well. Until then, I will see you later with some anthro analysis and antler antics. <gasps>
the messenger. Uh, by any chance, was he a jackal? Hey, hey, I'll tell you something, kid. That stuff don't mean a thing to me. I mean, what the heck? You may not realize it, but look at me. I'm a pig. Shucks, Bucks, that's what I am. No, 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 no. see, I, I didn't mean to suggest anything at all about the messenger. Or... Since you mentioned it, yeah, the messenger was a jackal. 